Hello, my holy hopeful hugging hogs. It's Miss Andrea with baby Lucas. Say hi, baby Lucas. We hope you're doing well and we love you very much. I need to go change his poopy diaper now, so I will see you later. Hi, Blue Airplanes. It's Kirsten Mark. I miss you guys. I'm feeling good, good, good in a crazy way. God's love changed me more than I can say. Can't keep this in, gotta let it out. Gonna tell the whole world that your love is spinning me around and around. Yeah, it's turning me upside down. I can't believe it when you love me more than I can contain. I'm gonna turn around and give you, give it away. some sun, don't we? Woo! But we're ready to focus. And I've got some glasses for you today. All right, you ready for them? They are super cool. Well, I like them anyway. Not only, you see them? Okay, watch this really coolly. Woo! That helps a little, helps me focus a little to be able to lift those up. Little crabs here. All right, do you have your glasses on? Because we are going to focus and take a closer look. Woohoo! All right, we have a few friends that have, you guys just keep finding those glasses, don't you? What do we have here? Olivia, she's doing the whole, I wear glasses all the time, Miss Lisa, okay? Looking good. Now let's see what your sister found. Oh, Emma found some snazzy, she's got some stars and some bling going on in her glasses. And Rhea, what did you get here? Oh, you got some snazzy ones too. You're like, I actually see your mom in the reflection of your glasses. You guys are looking good, man, looking good. All right, are you ready for our game? I might need to take these up to see if I can play it. See how fast you can guess it. It's another new one, so you don't know. Jump up and down when you think you know what it is. Oh, and 
Do you have this one? Next one. Yet again, I would say toilet seat. I just, why do they all look like a toilet seat? I don't know. Pastor Bob, what do you think it is? when you have your crazy glasses on. So if you have your crazy glasses on, now is probably a good time to take them off. We have a special treat, boys and girls. Miss Sharon, one of our amazing elementary Kids Church Small Group leaders is back to teach us again. So I want everyone to do what you need to do to stay focused for the next few minutes. She has another great true story from the book of Acts to teach us and to challenge us. And you know, I actually got to listen to her lesson. She recorded it and sent it to me. And she has some really important things to say all the way up to the very end, all right? So do your best to turn your ears on, be ready to listen, and more than just ready to listen to Miss Sharon, be ready to see what God might have for you to learn through the lesson that Miss Sharon has to teach us today, all right? So give her your undivided attention, Miss Sharon. We are so glad that you are here with us today. Not exactly with me in my living room. She's actually in her living room. But we are so glad that you're going to teach us this morning. So we love you, Miss Sharon. Boys and girls, are you ready for a great lesson? Awesome. Miss Sharon, take it away. Hello, everyone. Miss Sharon here. I'm so happy to be back with you again to tell you another incredible true story from the Bible that's going to remind us that when we know Jesus, it changes the way that we see our problems. And I'm guessing that probably you can think of one or two problems that you're having right now. Well, the main character in this story is Paul. And you're, you're probably familiar with him with some other stories. This is the guy who um, it used to be called Saul and he would go around like trying to stop people from believing in Jesus but then one day Jesus appears to him and he basically gives his life to Christ and then goes around like telling other people about Jesus and he changes his name to Paul so this is this is that Paul um, this when he made that change he started telling people about Jesus it meant that he sometimes ran into some pretty big problems like being made fun of being beaten, people threatening to kill him, um, getting kicked out of towns, being put into jail, so some pretty big stuff. One time he was in Jerusalem and he was arrested by some Roman soldiers after like this mob of people tried to kill him um, because he was sharing the message of Jesus. Um, and while he was there in that prison, um, Jesus um, came and spoke to Paul and this is what he said. He said, be encouraged, Paul. Just as I have told the people just as you have told the people about me here in Jerusalem, you must preach the good news in Rome. 
So that's important that that's kind of the, that's the plan. The plan was, I'm like, Jesus says, Paul, I'm going to send you to Rome. So one, so while Paul is in this jail there, he's, here's his message from Jesus. Um, one of the uh, commanders learns that these people are going to like try to, to trick the people into bringing Paul out so that they can kill him. And so Paul, um, gets moved to a different city called Caesarea. And while Paul is there, he asks the governor, like, hey, can I travel to Rome to stand trial before Caesar? And the governor agrees to do that. So to get there, he has to travel by sea. There's a lot of elements to the story, so hang with me, right? Paul has to travel by sea, and he gets handed over to this commander named Julius. Now, Julius is gonna be important in our story, so you wanna make sure you remember him. Um, but Julius seems to think Paul is a pretty cool guy and he even lets like Paul visit with his friends and stuff when they make stops. Um, so Paul gains favor with Julius. Um, and on one of their stops along this journey, the weather starts to get bad and Paul is like, look, ship owner, captain of the ship, I just don't think we should keep going because we're going to be in this big storm and it's probably not a good idea, but they didn't listen. They wanted to keep going. They wanted to stay on their journey. They're like, nope, it's going to be fine. Well, as you may have guessed, Paul was right. Um, and so uh, he was right about how bad this storm was going to be. And it was like a hurricane out there. So um, I don't know about you, but when it's like storming outside, I feel okay if I'm inside my house, but I definitely don't want to be out like in the middle of the ocean somewhere. Um, so the sailors are trying to keep the boat from like breaking apart. And, and, and it's just a crazy mess. And in the midst of all of this, Paul gets a message from God and he, he goes and he tells the crew like, Hey, I got this message from an angel. And this is what Paul says to the crew. Take courage. None of you will lose your lives, even though the ship will go down for last night, an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me. And he said, don't be afraid, Paul, for you will surely stand trial before Caesar. Pause. So like he's saying, you're going to get to Rome. Unpause. What's more, God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone sailing with you. So take courage. For I believe in God. This is Paul again. It will be just as he said, but we will be shipwrecked on an island. So the message is like, yes, we're going to be shipwrecked, but we're going to be fine. Right? That's so be encouraged. Everything's going to be okay. Um, so they're still in the middle of the storm. And the storm, it really like went on for like two weeks of all of this storm. And the sailors, are getting scared, you know? It's it's probably hard to keep that encouragement after two weeks of just the waves and wind bashing onto this boat. Um, but Paul continued to encourage them. He continued to, to tell them like, we gotta stay with the boat. God said we were gonna be fine, we're gonna be fine. Um, and then the boat starts to drift toward land. It's, it's broken apart, it's smashed by the waves. I mean, you just kind of picture this big boat just being destroyed by the, the winds and the waves. Well, the soldiers wanted to kill Paul and all the prisoners when this started happening because they thought the prisoners would escape and be able to swim away. But remember Julius, he, um, Paul had earned favor with Julius. And so Julius didn't want to kill Paul. Um, so, and he said, that we're not gonna do any of that to any of the, the prisoners. There, nobody is gonna harm them. Um, so God protected everyone on the ship and they all got to land safely. And they were at this island called Malta. Okay, so that's a lot, right? But the story is not over. There are more problems that are gonna happen. But they're on this island in Malta, and um, while they're there, they're gonna build a fire. You know, like we gotta, that, they're taking care of themselves. And the people that live on this island are there too. And while Paul is collecting sticks to build, for, to add to the fire, um, a snake bites him. Okay. Now I, is anyone else out there afraid of snakes? I two hands up for me. I don't care if it's a copperhead or a rattlesnake or a, a garden snake or a black snake or a fake plastic snake. I don't like them. Um, I'm afraid of them. So um, I am, I'm tracking with the people of Malta here when they see this snake bite Paul and they probably know, I mean, they live there. So they're probably like, oh, that's a poisonous snake. So this guy is gonna die. Um, but Paul just like shakes the snake off in the fire and he's totally fine. Like doesn't, doesn't seem to hurt him at all. 
Um, and so when he does that, the people living there are amazed. They've probably never seen this happen before. Like the snake should probably, it probably should have resulted in him collapsing and dying, but it didn't. So they think, wow, this guy must be like a God. They don't, they don't understand that Paul serves a God who is protecting him through all of this. Um, so the chief of the island welcomes Paul into his home. He's like, come on in. Paul actually asks God to heal this official's father and he does. And so all the people of the island who are sick are coming and they're gathering and God is healing them through Paul. And because of that, they provide them with everything they need to continue their journey. Again, the end, the end goal here is that Paul gets to Rome. So now these people are seeing God at work and they're giving the supplies that Paul and everyone with him needs so they can continue their journey and get to Rome. So think about all the stuff that happened to Paul, right? He's a prisoner, all because he's telling people about Jesus, right? So he's a prisoner. People are out to harm him and kill him. He's in the middle of the sea during a terrible storm. He gets shipwrecked. He gets bitten by a snake. I mean, that is a lot, y'all. That's a lot going on with Paul. But Paul chose to have faith and trust in God, even when things weren't going the way maybe he would have planned. Like maybe when, when uh, Jesus came and said, like, Paul, you're going to go to Rome, he was thinking like a nice little quiet journey to Rome, right? He wasn't thinking all of this. He, he was probably thinking it would be a lot easier than this. But it didn't stop him from trusting God when things didn't go the way that he thought they would go. And maybe you're feeling a little discouraged right now because of, well, all kinds of problems. Like I'm sure that many of you miss seeing your friends like you normally do. Um, maybe you're feeling lonely or scared or just you're just wondering, what is school going to look like in the fall? And I'm a teacher and I am with you on that. I'm feeling all of that as well. But Paul gives us a great example here that when we know Jesus, it changes the way that we see our problems. Did you, did you notice in that story that people were kind of drawn to Paul throughout it? Like we had Julius, the people of the island were, were drawn to him. And I think it's because of the way that he handled the problems that he encountered. The way that his attitude and his perspective was different and they were probably curious about that. Like, man, all this terrible stuff is happening to this guy. But he is like so encouraging all the time. Like that's, that's kind of a different response than what we would think is normal, right? So it changes the way that we view things when we trust God with the problems that we have. Um, the, the cool thing too is that when we change our own attitude about our problems, it, it brings peace to us and it impacts the people around us. God's purpose was always to get him to Rome. That was what we learned at the very beginning, right? You're going to go to Rome, Paul. Um, that's what the angel told him. And all of the events in the story lined up to that purpose, to get Paul to Rome. He finally got there. They went along their way after leaving the island of Malta, and they finally got to Rome. Um, it just maybe didn't happen the way that Paul or other people may have thought it would. When we trust God with our problems, it calms our hearts. Things aren't always going to happen the way that we think that they should or they will. But when we focus on who God is and remember that he is sovereign and in control no matter what, it gives us a new perspective. And when we do that, other people are drawn to that. They want to know more about this God that we serve. Um, so it's, it's like two things that benefit there. We have peace and we're able to share Jesus with other people. Uh, this past week, I was reading the story of when Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, like right before he's taken to be killed and crucified. And it's a pretty familiar story to me that I've read throughout my entire life, and many of you might be familiar with it as well, but it just kind of um, struck me a little bit differently in the midst of all of the things that we're going through right now. But if you don't remember, this is, Jesus is in the Garden and he's praying and, and he knows, he knows that people are about to come and get him and to, to kill him and torture him and it's all gonna be really, really physically and spiritually painful. And um, he knows, you know, he's going to rise again, but it's going to be, there's going to be a lot that has to happen before that. So he prays to God. And this is what he says. He says, Father, 
If you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will, not mine. So basically, I want your plan, God, um, not the one that I've got in my head. And I love this because it shows us a couple of things. It's okay to ask God to take away our problems, to, to handle our problems. Like we can, we can pray for those things. God wants us to pray for the things, the struggles, the problems that we have in our lives. So be honest with him. If you're feeling scared or you're feeling lonely or you have friends or family members who are sick, God wants us to pray for those people. He wants us to bring those things to him. But this also teaches us that God is good and he has a plan. He's, he's in control and his plan is better than our plan. His ways are higher than our, our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He's God. He is so big and he's got the whole picture of everything that he's thinking about when we only just see a little tiny piece. God could see Paul in Rome when Paul was on a ship that was going down. He could see Paul in Rome when Paul was getting bitten by a snake. Like he always had that vision of what, how things were gonna end. And Paul couldn't always see it, but God can. Um, so Jesus sets a great example of just acknowledging that, that when things are hard and things will be hard sometimes, God's way is always the best. So I, I hope that these stories, they bring you encouragement and help you remember that when you know Jesus, it changes the way you see your problems. We can trust God during anything that we face because we know he's ultimately in control and he has a plan that is good. Um, and know that when we change our perspective about our problems, it can be a way that God uses us to be a witness to people around us. And we can, we can bring other people to know God that don't know him yet. So know that Miss Lisa, your small group leaders, me, we are all praying for you all. We cannot wait to be back with you again, but we are praying that, that you will have strength and faith during this time and that your faith and strength would be a witness to the people around you and that they would wanna know God because of your attitude and your perspective during this time. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for being a God who's in control no matter what. When everything else around us seems completely out of control, we can rest in the knowledge that you are in control, and we thank you for that. I pray for every kid who's watching this, who maybe is just thinking through some of the problems that they're having. God, I pray that you would remind them that you are in control, that they can trust you, and I pray that when they do that, they would be a witness to people around them, that they would be filled with your peace and that that would overflow into the people that they, they know and that the people that they talk to. Um, we just ask you, um, we ask you for healing. We ask you um, for things to, to get better, God. But we, we also understand that your will is better than our will. And your ways are higher than our ways. And we thank you and we praise you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye, y'all. Thank you so much, Miss Sharon, for your words and just for taking the time to teach us such an important lesson to remind us that knowing Jesus changes the way you see your problems. Can you guys say that with me? Knowing Jesus changes the way you see your problems. Wow, Paul was faced with a lot of problems, huh? But he, he persevered. And he kept his eyes on Jesus because Paul knew that knowing Jesus changes the way you see your problems. And God used Paul in such amazing ways, didn't he? Thank you, thank you, thank you, Miss Sharon, um, for being with us. And we hope that you join us again soon. Boys and girls, are you ready to sing a song? This is actually one of Miss Sharon's favorites too, so I bet she's watching with us and I bet she'll stand up and even sing along with us. This song is talks about how we won't be shaken even when we have problems or go through tough times. It, it will be tough at times, right? But then when we know Jesus, it'll change the way we see our problems and we will be on a firm foundation, unable to be completely shaken because we know Jesus. Are you guys ready to sing along this morning? I know you all know this one, so put your hands together. We're gonna sing it out loud. Cause you are Lord to keep my lamp burning. Cause you have turned my darkness to light. You set my feet high on this mountain. And put my enemies to fight so I, I will praise you as long as I live. You know what's coming up, right? I want to hear it. I will praise you again and Nora and Finley, you guys ready? Let's hear it. 
for our friends Rose and Willie before we go today. God, we are so thankful um, for Rose and Willie and just for their friendship that we get to have. God, I pray that you would continue to be with them and to keep them safe and to provide for them what they need. God, I am also so thankful that knowing your son Jesus helps us to see our problems differently. And God, I'm thankful that you help us to get through hard times, that you help us to keep our eyes fixed on you even when it's difficult and that that would really change our perspectives and change our hearts. So God, I pray that you'd continue to do that as so many of us might be going through a hard time right now. So we might be thinking about school and um, all of the other things that might feel a bit stressful right now. I pray that you would help us to keep our eyes on you and that that would help us get us through this time. We love you so much, and we pray all of these things in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Amen, boys and girls. All right. Oh, hold on one second. I'm back, boys and girls, and I just wanted to remind you about Rocky Railway VBS that's coming up in less than two weeks. Listen. Do you hear the train? We are about to take a journey on a steam engine through the Rocky Mountains. You won't want to miss it. So make sure moms and dads know that it is the last week of July. July 27th through the 31st, Monday through Friday, every day at 10 a.m. or at 7 p.m. You can choose if you want to participate in the morning or in the evening. I am so excited. I hope that you are too. We are going to have an amazing week together learning all about how Jesus' power helps pull us through. Boys and girls, you won't want to miss it.